GPT-3 in the enterprise. We're nearly at the end of 2022, and it's been about two and a half years since GPT-3 was released by OpenAI. Where is it? Who's using it? And what should you be doing with it? It's actually two and a half years since GPT-3 came out. And in that time, it's been explosive for those that are looking at it. Of course, 99% of the population may be somehow accessing it, whether it's through Grammarly or through Copilot or using other transformer models through Google search, through Bing, but they may not actually know about it unless they're a computer scientist or unless they've stumbled upon it through some of the tech media. Today, end of 2022, GPT-3 has 1 million subscribed users, either using it via the playground or via API. The model keeps typing and outputting 3.1 million words per minute as of last year, which is 4.5 billion words per day. Absolutely extraordinary. I'm sure those figures have doubled or tripled or even 10 x for the actual output because those stats are a year old. It's definitely something that a lot more devs are getting into. As was announced just a few weeks ago, almost silently, it was in a conversation between Microsoft CEO and OpenAI CEO, and they didn't actually talk about it. They didn't verbally mention it. It just scrolled very gently at the bottom of the screen. This is at the Microsoft Ignite AI conference where they were really showing that so many clients, so many Fortune 500s are neck deep in GPT-3. Here's a list that I've put together from the Ignite data from October 2022, as well as some data that OpenAI was originally talking about via their website back in 2021. Have a look at some of these clients here. They're absolutely massive. You've got some of the big four there like PwC and EY. Accenture in some ways is actually bigger than those in what they do for IT and Wipro in India, and they've integrated GPT-3 in what they're doing. You've also got Disney in there. You've also got BMW, and I'm sure you'll recognize your own favorite logos from companies, from corporations that are really playing around with GPT-3 for both internal benefits and external facing benefits. Let's have a look at some of the example use cases. And I've done a much longer article on this a few months ago, mid 2022. Here are some of the use cases that I've played around with with my Fortune 500 companies and other businesses. Number one, internal process automation, helping out with essentially what would have been the RPA of the 1990s, robotic process automation, but using GPT-3 to look inside of documents and entire systems is definitely beneficial. Product marketing material development. You will have seen this quite a bit already with some massive tools that help you write blogs or articles. Summarization of meeting transcripts. This was a confidential one that I had uh, some oversight of where it's essentially taking conversations, transcribing that, summarizing that, and then sending that through to management via email. Brainstorming and idea generation using GPT-3. If you're talking about Dolly 2, Mattel went and used that text to image model to design their latest toys. External and customer facing chatbots. This one is difficult to get right, but GPT-3 makes it a lot easier. And internal knowledge bases and chatbots. This is a huge one because it allows companies to consolidate all of their massive disparate knowledge bases that might be in silos throughout 50,000, 100,000 employees and allow people to actually find out what's going on over there in New York or what's going over there in London and what's going on in all of these different product categories within their own company because it's so big. I've seen that a lot, I've worked on that a lot, and that one is actually a really important use case to the extent that OpenAI's CEO actually commented on it in the conversation with Microsoft's CEO. He said, Morgan Stanley is building an AI assistant that helps their tens of thousands of wealth managers better support their clients. 
the Assistant combines search and content creation so that wealth managers can quickly find and tailor the right information for every client at every moment. One of the most interesting parts of this entire explosion is that so far in this conversation, we've just talked about GPT-3. And GPT-3 continues to be probably the most popular model followed by Jurassic 1 by AI21. But it's only one of many, many open models. You'll see here, those that are open have no Navy outline and those that are closed have the Navy outline. So that includes Microsoft and Nvidia's model, the yellow one there, it includes Google's Palm stuff. And then of course, all of DeepMind stuff is closed for now. But GPT-3 has alternatives. So even though it's massive, even though it's being played with by a million subscribed users and it's outputting 3.1 million words per minute, or maybe 10x that at the moment, it's still just one of maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 amazing models that are not as proprietary. So when we're looking at stats, we have to remember that's just one of many. And of course, it will be superseded very, very soon when the successor to GPT-3 comes out, hopefully in the next few months, but I have been saying that for a little while. We'll wait, maybe December, January, February, 2023. As more and more businesses grab onto these large language models and integrate them into their processes, integrate them into their business. ARK Invest expects that artificial intelligence will generate a business value, enterprise value creation of $87 trillion over the next few years. That's around $25 trillion from the model APIs like OpenAI's GPT-3 or Luther AI's GPT-Neo X20B. And then more than double that, around $55 trillion value, unlocked by the new AI apps that are being developed. And while the revenue from these applications is currently kind of in a discrete package with just a few big players, and you may have heard of these, you've got Jasper AI with an enormous valuation now, $1.5 billion as of 2022, just for essentially a wrapper around GPT-3. And then Copilot, which is also boasting about one and a half million subscribed users, also generating significant revenue via GitHub. The approvals process for getting a GPT-3 app out there now has been quashed. As of a few months ago or in the last couple of years, it's been pretty intense to get a GPT-3 app approved. You had to make sure that you told people that it wasn't human. You had to not be in particular industries and the list went on and on and on. And also the time factor would be sometimes restrictive and sometimes would hold back businesses because it might take three months or six months to get that approval come through, even if it's just a tiny little update or revision. They've just removed that as of November, 2022. And what we're looking at now is the ability to deploy a GPT-3 app instantly. As many of the blue chips have been working with AI and these large language models for around two years, smaller businesses and slower corporations are going to be playing catch up in a big way. This is the most outrageous revolution since the discovery of fire or electricity or the birth of the internet. And it really does give such an outrageous multiplier to the outputs of the business. One of my colleagues, superlegal.ai, gave this fantastic quote to put everything into perspective. They say, AI will not replace lawyers, but lawyers who use AI will certainly replace those who don't. My experience working with the largest Fortune 500s in the world, helping them deploy LLMs, helping them understand large language models and helping them embrace what's possible with artificial intelligence in 2022 and in 2023 says that the big guys are doing this in a big way, that there is so much ground that's been covered already, but that we're really at the tip of the iceberg in what's able to be created. So we've got this large language model GPT-3 that's been around for two and a half years and we still haven't drawn out what's possible with using its black box, its brain. 
I think what we're going to be seeing over 2023, over those 12 months there, is going to be mind-blowing for a lot of people. See you soon. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo. Thank <laughs> you.